Today is more of a practical demonstration, so I'll actually show you how to put this together. Uh, and uh, the purpose of it is to show you some of the plugins that you can use and some of the third party services that you can use to uh, create this. So you can either use it for yourself or for those of you that have got clients, then you can implement this for your clients. And it's a good stream of income, uh, additional stream of income if you do this for your clients as well. Um, as a point of fact, I probably spend less than one minute on this every week. In fact, I probably don't even spend that long. I've got it to that point there. And it, uh, this is one of the systems or processes that uh, Craig talked about earlier where you set something up and then you automate it. So this is, for me, this is truly automated and for my clients it's truly automated as well too. So, yeah, my background is uh, I did live in Wellington for quite some time. I was born in Norfolk Island, lived in Wellington, uh, had a mortgage broking company for 10 years there, got out when the GFC uh, hit, uh, which was a really good time to get out. Uh, went to Australia and uh, set up a uh, web development company uh, and I wasn't quite new at it. Uh, I'd actually developed a website for my uh, mortgage breaking business way back in the early 2000s and that was one of the reasons that took our sort of small local firm to a um, you know, national presence with, uh, I think we had three branches at one point, but mainly driven out of one, one office, but we were working uh, nationally or off the back of a website. So um, yeah, run an uh, agency up in the Gold Coast and uh, work from home. And if I bring you through the next slide, you'll see there it's uh, this little pic picture of a, uh, a snake there. The reason for that is I do live in the countryside. I came from New Zealand where there are no dangerous creatures. I moved to Australia where everything wants to bite you or eat you. <laughs> and, uh, and working, so I, I live in a little sort of rural area and we have our own free range chickens. And uh, during the day while I'm developing, you just hear this the chickens have this unusual squawk and it's, you've got your egg laying squawk, you've got a rooster is after me squawk um, and then you've got this sort of frenetic sort of squawk like there's uh, something wrong. So I'm, I'm down the stairs whipping outside, sure enough there's a snake in the, uh, in the chook house and uh, what I learnt uh, from uh, coming from New Zealand is that uh, it's actually not that hard to just grab it by the neck, pick it up and throw it out of the uh, chook house. <laughs> So, uh, so stress from clients is nothing compared to picking up a snake and throwing it out. So that really just put work into uh, perspective. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I've been around WordPress since uh, around 2008. Uh, I was looking for a system where I could build a website that I could change quickly uh, and not have to pay a developer 120 or 180 bucks an hour to change a, uh, a price on something that we were selling and take three weeks to, uh, to do it. I didn't know they were called CMSs. Um, and a friend of mine introduced me to WordPress back in 2008 and I thought, well, where was this when I needed it back in the uh, early 2000s? So I've been word with WordPress since then, love it, and uh, have been through all of the developments and changes. For those that are getting into it now, it is just so much easier than it used to be sort of back in 2008. So it's a, it's a really good platform to use and it's more powerful than you probably realise and there are applications that run on it now and organisations that run on it now that, um, that you probably don't even know. Probably the biggest one in Australia would be News Corp and most of their publications are all served, you know, when you're reading it, they're all served on WordPress, so you're looking at it WordPress. And what you'll see in the future is that there'll be a lot of uh, sites or, or applications you visit that run on WordPress, but they don't use a WordPress front end, they're using something else, uh, which is sort of what News Corp does as well with some of their uh, information. Uh, so it's very, very powerful. But what I'll talk about today is it's really a business talk and it's, it's about communication and how you communicate to your clients and customers. And when I was in, uh, in my earlier business, um, sending out a regular newsletter was really important. Actually trying to sit down and find the time to send out a regular newsletter and put the whole thing together, that was really hard. And uh, what I found is that most people start off with really good intentions to set out a newsletter and they might get two out and that's it, it's, it's done and it's over, they haven't got time to do it anymore because they're in the business of actually doing their business. So this here is to address that, so you've got a regular newsletter that goes out without taking a lot of time um, that, and it just, it just happens. So what it isn't about is it's uh, not about SEO, 
So there's nothing, no SEO strategy here. It's not about driving traffic to a website. It's not about promoting your website in, in, in any way, shape or form. It's got very little to do with the website. Um, it's not a call to action. It's none of those sort of things there. But what it is, is it's uh, about having regular, consistent contact with your client base. That's, that's probably the key thing. Because uh, can you imagine a relationship if you're, if you're married to someone or you, you've got a relationship with someone and uh, you see them once a year? It's probably not going to go that well. So part of a relationship is you're seeing each other, other regularly, you're talking regularly, you have fights, you have sort of good times, all of that sort of stuff there. It's the same in business. So all we're doing is we're just encouraging more of that interaction with your uh, client base. It is about providing value. So providing additional things to people that is uh, useful for them. Now value means it's useful for them, not for you. So um, you know, you're not pushing stuff onto them, but you're giving them stuff that they find interesting that they want to come in and find, more, find out more about. It's about nurturing your client base and uh, it definitely is about marketing as well. So this is a, an online marketing strategy. But I hear you say, People don't read newsletters. We get so many emails coming into our inbox that most of them get deleted before they're read. Well, that's true, because I do that. Uh, in fact, uh, I use uh, G Suite or Gmail to collect all my emails. The great thing about that there is they've got these tick boxes, and you can tick the top one, and you hold the shift key down, and you can tick the bottom one. It highlights a lot, and you hit the delete key, boom, they're gone. So that's probably going to happen to your newsletter that you send out. So the strategy you put in place, it's probably going to happen to that. But you know what? It really doesn't matter. Because what it is about is about keeping you and your business top of mind for them. And it's about being there regularly. So it's, it's that whole advertising thing. Like why, why do uh, businesses advertise on TV and every ad break you see the same ad over and over and over and over again? So it's about... Getting, those, getting your kids to sing those jingles uh, so that uh, your kids now are reminding you about these ads that uh, keep on popping up on TV. They really annoy you, but at the end of the day, annoy you or what? Guess what? You remember them. So this is all about remembering. It's not about annoying your clients, but it's just about having, them, having you top of mind and uh, remembering you. And there's a marketing principle out there called RFM which is uh, recency, frequency, and monetize. And what that means is, is that uh, people buy off people they trust. And so how do you gain that trust? Is that uh, one is that you've spoken to them or communicated uh, with them recently. So at the point of time they're making a decision, uh, they, re they remember you because you've just spoken to them. The other one is, is that uh, not only have they just spoken to you now or communicated with you just now, but they've done it every week for the past year. So when they're making a decision about which web development firm should we go with, should it be uh, this one here that uh, I've just Googled, or, or should it be this one here that's been sending me information on a regular basis that I find of value, there's been some really interesting stuff in it, they seem to know what they're doing, seem to know what they're talking about, uh, versus this one here I've only just met, which do you think they're going to go with? So this is about sort of you know, creating that sort of relationship, building the credibility. And it doesn't matter whether it's a web development business or uh, financial services business or what, what is, this, this works for, you know, pretty much, you know, all businesses, particularly service businesses. Uh, and then the last one is, uh, is, is, is monetize, because obviously, you know, once they made the, they're in the buying mode, they'll actually spend the money with, you know, the one they trust and the one that they know. Does that make sense? But I hear you say, Writing a newsletter, it's too hard. I've got no time. You know, spending all the time in the business, working in the business, running the business. I've got sort of, um, you know, issues coming out of my ears. That, you know, I've got to deal with clients, for goodness sake. And they keep coming in and they've got problems and issues. And I've got to try and sort them out. So there is no time. So when do you do it? Late at night after you get home and uh, you've, you've got, you know, your work's over. You've finished your accounts. So now time to write the newsletter at one o'clock in the morning. You know, you've got a few hours before you have to get up the next morning. And then there's, uh, well, what do I write about? So, probably an abundance of topics, but you know, when you sit down to write, can you think of anything to write about? Usually that's when the blank page happens and the blank mind's there. When a blank page and a blank mind meet, all you get is nothing. Um, or time poor, it's, it becomes a low priority. So when a client rings up or you've got sort of, um, something there that's of an urgent, urgent nature, it sits on the top of the pile 
this newsletter actually isn't urgent at all, so it just keeps on getting pushed down as all these urgent things get sort of uh, thrown on top. And once you've actually put pen to paper or keyboard to, um, to computer, then you've got to do the design, the layout, you've got to find images uh, that are relevant to it all. You know, there, that's why most newsletters probably get about, there's about two that go out and then it stops there because it's just too much work and it's too time consuming. So, 17 minutes? Could we really do a newsletter in 17 minutes or less a week? Um, well, it is all about the setup. It's about automation and it's about delegation. I actually do this in my business. We have a, a newsletter that goes out once a week, every week, without fail, and I spend no time on it um, because we've set it up to automate. I do have someone that works on it, and for her, it probably takes her, if, if she's spending 17 minutes on it a week, she's spending, you know, that's, that's probably the most check she spends on it going through this process here. The key to it is, is uh, OPC, leveraging other people's content. Uh, and there's lots of, uh, of well-written uh, articles out there that are uh, by people that know a lot more than I do, that write a lot better than I do, uh, and are a lot more interesting to people than you know, what I could write. So if it's there, why not use it? Because your clients and customers probably haven't seen it. So all you're doing is you're grabbing their content and presenting it to them. Because they, 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 they're not interested in who wrote it, they're interested in who actually gave it to them. So when you're giving a gift, you don't actually have to make the gift, you just have to give the gift. So the first place to start is uh, in your business, there's probably things that you receive that you subscribe to that are of interest to you, that you know are going to be of interest to your uh, client base. So that's, that's a good place to start. Um, for me as a, as a web developer, probably what's not of interest to my clients is um, why PHP 7 is good as opposed to PHP 5.6. Uh, it's really interesting to me, but that's not interesting to my clients. Um, but what may be interested, uh, interesting to my clients is how to get uh, another 1% additional revenue uh, from your website uh, without having to do a whole lot more work. So that sort of thing might be interesting. Or how to get 10% uh, you know, more traffic, or how to get another 1,000 visitors to my site, uh, which then convert into another 10 customers at $200 a, uh, a shot. That there starts to become interesting. Now PHP 7 might actually help with that in terms of speed, but actually the, it's the result. So you want to think, when, you, when, you're giving when you're giving people information, what is it that's going to add value to them and often what adds value to them is something that's going to save them time or save them money or make them money in their particular business or in industry. So if you've got that top of mind, then you're, then you're looking in the right places. So um, I, when I subscribe to newsletters or blogs and my uh, virtual assistant often does this, she's got a, we've set out a set of criteria, she, so she's got criteria that she works to. Uh, will we use a service, a third party service like Feedly.com? And uh, we'll subscribe to it, and all of those articles just come into our Feedly account, and uh, then we can then all we have to sift and sort through is, is just interesting articles that are in that there. So that's just aggregate the content that we find is interesting. Um, often use a dedicated email account, so mine's really imaginative. Um, I use subscribe at positivebusinessonline.com, and so that's what we use to subscribe to you know, any articles or um, or posts that, that are out there. So it's not filling up my inbox or yeah, with that, it's, it's just a dedicated email address. So it is all in the setup, and uh, what I'll run through now are the uh, WordPress plugins that we use to set this up. So, um, and I'll make these slides available. So, if you, if, if you want to follow this through, you can, there's a formula here you can follow all this through and implement it yourself, and it, and it will work. So, the first one I use is a plugin called uh, Tribulant Newsletters, it's available in the WordPress plugin repository. Uh, that's the free version that's, uh, that's in there. Uh, there is a pro version, which I recommend that uh, after you've tried it out, uh, get the pro version because that's got all the features. I think this is limited to 100 subscribers, or there is some limitation there. But to buy it, it's about 50 bucks, so you know it's not expensive. So install that, configure that. There is a uh, part of the configuration is you probably can't actually read this, but this is the configuration screen. The important things that we do is we put in a subject line. So this subject line's on, on every email, so it might be, I think, 
ours is probably really exciting, like positive business online news, you know, something like that. But we just use the same subject line all the time, and the reason for that is when it hits the inbox, they know who it's from. So they've got the email, they've got the email address they know it's from. As soon as they see positive business online news, it's like these are these people again. Remember, it's just keeping top of mind. Uh, we set, well, you have to set the number of posts. So you can set the last five posts or last ten posts that go out. We set it at sort of 100. You know, we're never going to publish more than 100 there, but we just want to make sure that everything we publish there goes out in the next newsletter. Um, and we, we set the, um, the, start, uh, you know, the start date for the posts that are there and how often we send it. So we send ours once a week. might be more appropriate for you to send it once a month. If you, if you really want to sort of be top of mind, send one once a day or even twice a day. But uh, you probably get a lot of unsubscribes if you do that. <laughs> and you can create your own theme, your own newsletter theme, so that it's branded to yourself. So you can load that up, have your own theme, so, so your, your, your branding's in front of the clients as well too. But configuration page, you'll be able to have a look at this on the slides when you, um, when you get them. Obviously need a subscribe form so you can get people to subscribe to your newsletter. Uh, and one of the good things is, is if you use a plugin like Gravity Forms, uh, you can connect your Gravity form to this newsletter form and so you can have all of your landing pages and opt-in pages, all of them connecting through the newsletter. So everything you, uh, every time you grab an email address on the website, your contact forms, all feeds into your, into your newsletter. And you can, you can segment it by um, so, you know, what, land, what landing page they came from. So you, you can be as granular or, or not as you like with it. So the plugin, it's, the um, Tribulant plugin has got pretty much uh, a lot of the features that your MailChimps or your um, campaign monitors uh, have got as well. And, um, and if you didn't want to use that plugin, you could use Campaign Monitor or MailChimp or any of those other services there. It, it works with that as well too. Um, also use a plugin called Quick Page Post Redirect Plugin uh, and we'll show you why we use that. There's the configuration we use, that's just for you to go and sort of copy when you do it. But essentially what we do is, oh, I'll tell you about it. The other plugin that we use is Jetpack the, um, and what we enable and configure on Jetpack is the uh, auto share to social media. So whenever we, we publish a post that's going to go into the uh, newsletter, that every time it uh, publishes, we send it out on social media as well. So it goes out into Twitter, into uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, I don't know, so there's, 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 how many have I got there? Tumblr, Google Plus, a few Google Plus accounts. Yeah, so there's lots of places it goes. Uh, in fact, there's someone that I met here today, Gita, who said, oh yeah, I see you all the time on Twitter. Well, that's probably from all the articles that we publish through the system here. So that's top of mind. So, um, so someone I've never met before knows me because she's seen our stuff out there on a uh, fairly regular basis. So that's part of it as well. And I've got clients that say, I know you from somewhere. And uh, we've never met them before, but uh, my images like my profile images out and all, all social media so I use my face out there so they become familiar with my face but then I'm also publishing stuff on a very very constant basis so that gives people a feeling that when they meet you they actually feel like they they know you so that's part of it and when people feel like they know you then they're more likely to trust you and they're more likely to come and do business with you. So it's a handy little feature in uh, WordPress, which is a little button called Press This. How many people have seen that and know where that is? Who has no idea where that is? Excellent. <laughs> this is a really cool tool that not many people know about, but makes publishing content uh, really, really easy. And, um, and I think it's in Tools. If you go to the dashboard there, under Tools, um, then you'll see that little press this marker, that's what, it is. that's what the button looks like. All you do with it is you put your mouse cursor on it, you click on it and drag it up to your bookmarks bar and let go and then you'll be able to use that on any website you visit in that browser and I'll show you how that works. This is, this is how it works. <laughs> um, oh actually I've got a video on it so uh, let's play the video and we'll show you. Maybe we won't. 
you know how to play this video? Oh no, is it going? There it is. So what we're doing is, we, there's the press this, see we've dragged it up to the uh, toolbar there. And this is Feedly, so here's all the articles that are in the uh, Feedly account. So you see it just brings them all in. And so when we go to a user, we select one of them, use the press this, um, or we, we open it up in the browser. So we've, we've now gone to one of these articles that we've uh, found. So here it is, we go and press that press this thing that we dragged up to the toolbar. That now opens a post in WordPress, a draft post in this format here. So now we can format it. So we're going to add an image to add as the uh, featured image. And uh, then we're going to add some uh, categories. So uh, we'll, we'll categorize it so it sits in the right place on the website. And uh, we'll also add some tags as well. So this is all happening on this screen here. And then once we've done that, we'll go down and we'll uh, publish it as a draft post. So on that bottom right hand um, area that you can see a little blue button, that one there. So we'll click that and we select draft. You can actually publish it straight from there, but we just select draft because there's a few other things we want to do. So then it opens it up in the uh, WordPress editing dashboard. So we can edit it from here. So select the text editor and then we're going to take the uh, URL of the source because the URL is in there. We're going to copy it and drag it down into uh, this area. This is the, the quick redirects plugin. So we're going to put the link in there so that uh, we're going to be able to redirect it to that link. And when people come to the site, they'll be able to open it on the actual site itself. We'll now schedule a publish date. And what we do is we publish every day. So we put an article out every day. So it publishes on our website every day. It's only, it's only an excerpt. So that's what appears in your um, archives anyway as an excerpt. But it's only an excerpt that we're publishing from this um, site. And um, when, you when you click on it, when it's live, it takes you straight through to Moz. So this one here, the article is taken from Moz. So it takes you straight through there. You don't even see it on the front end of your website. If you actually want to see it on the front end of your website, just untick those two uh, tick boxes here. And then, uh, what are we doing? I think we're just changing the date there, setting the date. Decide we're going to publish on a different day now. And then we'll go and preview it on the front of the site. So this here is taking us through to the front of my website now. This is what it looks like on the front of my... Well, this, this is actually a 2014 theme, I think. We've just got a vanilla website. This is what it looks like here. So it's, it is just the excerpt, um, but they'll never see it. So now we'll just tick the uh, to make it live again and to make sure that it redirects to the original article. And now it opens up on Moz. So this is it on the Moz. So they don't even see it on the front of my website. This is the newsletter when it goes out. So every week, every, every article that we've published, so we publish these once a day on our website, and it collates all of the, um, you've got an image, a headline, and an excerpt into the newsletter. This is what you, what you see in the inbox. Now, when someone comes and clicks on, say, a link, they, they'll, they'll just scan through. What people do is they scan through and say, is there anything interesting to me here? Um, no, no, no. Oh, actually, this one looks really interesting. They'll click on that link there. It goes through to my website but they don't get to see it because it just goes straight through to um, the website that the article is hosted on. So I haven't written any of these articles. There are people far better and far more talented than me that have written them. Um, all I've done is sent them this here of stuff that they may be interested in. Does that make sense? So, 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 the, so, the, so the purpose of it is I just send this out to them regularly. There are some ancillary, an, ancillary benefits on the website for doing this. But there's 15 steps. Remember I said it's going to take you 17 minutes a week? Well, it's only 15 steps to set up, and each of these steps is less than a minute anyway. So we set up the press this. Set up Feedly to grab your articles. Go to your website. Click press this, you know, that was up on that top bar there. Um, we select a featured image. We categorize it. We tagify it. We open the standard editor through Publishers Draft. We set the quick links so it redirects through to the original article page. We just format it a bit just to make, you know, there's sometimes there are words in there that are not quite right. So we might write a uh, custom excerpt there if, if we want. We, you know, you can do that sort of thing. Schedule the publish date. Oh, oh, and we check the social media settings. So when it publishes, so every time it publishes, it also publishes to our Facebook page, to our Twitter, Google+, whatever. So that all goes out there. So that gets published before our newsletter gets published. So these things are, are constantly going out. So we're all over the place. Um, 
Test the link, rinse and repeat. So just do that. So you imagine if you if you wanted five articles in a newsletter, just do that five times. You could probably knock that out in, you know, 15 minutes or so. So easy, eh? Um, and so this way here, you've got no excuse for for not doing it. Um, you haven't, you know, because you've always got 15 minutes somewhere. Um, you don't have to write it. You don't have to find images. Uh, you don't have to sort of look at this blank page with a blank mind and come up with nothing because you've, you've got lots of stuff on the web. You find stuff that's interesting to you and interesting to your, to your clients and generally if it's inter really interesting to you, it's probably interesting to them as well if it's in the same sort of field. Um, so, you know, there's, there's nothing hard about that because you're interested in it as well. And, um, and so now you're just serving up value week after week after week and then when their people are ready to buy or they're ready to do something with you, who's top of mind? Well, you are because they've seen you every week. Uh, you seem to know what you're talking about because you're publishing stuff that's really good. When they click on the links, it actually makes sense and it adds value to them. Um, so, uh, you know, in their eyes, it just lifts your credibility over and above all of your competitors because how many of your competitors are doing this? Probably none or one or two. So they're probably, they're probably spending way more time on it th than you are. But you, you're just doing it in under 17 minutes a week while they're sweating so for, you know, three or four hours a week to do it. So uh, you're on the beach while they're writing their articles. Easy, eh? <laughs> um, so, oh, that's a finished product. So that's, that's, that's sort of what it looks like. Oh, I'm missing an image there. We didn't put a featured image in one of them. You know, the good thing about that is that one really stands out, so they'll probably click on it and read it. There are some, uh, some additional ancillary benefits with this. Um, one is, is that if you set up your categories right on your website, so we've set up categories for things like uh, SEO, things that are related to SEO, things that are related to um, uh, creating content, things that are relating to um, oh, Facebook. I don't know what they all are now. I don't do it. Um, but what happens is, is that... Uh, all of those categories, you've now filled up your category pages with all of these articles there that are interesting. So your category pages look like your newsletters, but now you've got sort of uh, you know five pages of articles in on let's say SEO. So it means when when people come to your website, you've actually got a whole lot of content there. That interesting. When they click on them, they still go to another website, and on my one, they all open up on a new web page. So they still stay on my website, but they're opened up in a in another page. Um, but now, now your website becomes a resource that's, that's, that people will go to because they know that there's material in there that um, is going to be of interest to them um, because you've aggregated it and collated it all. From a search engine perspective, when you've got a whole page, an archive page on search engine optimization, how do you think that's going to also work on your search rankings or you know, widget making or pancake making? You know, you've got all the 15 ways to make pancakes on one page. You know, so from a search engine perspective, you can, you can now optimise that archive page um, put, uh, and, and uh, you can put a, so let's say, an opening description on it with, a, with you know, here are the top uh, articles, you know, about pancake making. Um, and so you, so, you can do, so you can do a wee bit for optimisation as well too, so you can start to, um, you know, get good search juice on it as well. Um, you, can, you, you can reuse some of the really popular articles, so, so with the plugin in there you can track who's clicked on what, who's opened what, so you, so you know exactly what's happening. If you find some articles there uh, are, are really popular, you could create another broadcast uh, newsletter or, or mailing out and uh, you could just include all the popular articles. And, and when you're in there, it's just a tick box of I want this one, this one, this one and this one. Uh, click Q to send and it's gone. So you, you've got an extra resource for all your popular things. You could use it in an autoresponder as well too. So when someone signs up on, a, on your website for um, you know, the 16 greatest things about so whatever it is you do, uh, you can send them that 16 greatest things and then queue up an autoresponder of the um, 15 sort of, uh, most popular articles that relate to that as well that you've cur curated off the web that, are, that you've sent through in a newsletter before. And um, so setting up that autoresponder sort of probably takes you less than a minute too to, to queue up each autoresponder. So you get a 15 autoresponder auto set up that you haven't written um, that still keeps you in touch with your, with your clients. Um, you can create new subscriber lists to access specific categories. So if you've got a landing page on um, uh, gluten-free pancakes 
you can set up a landing page for, uh, there. They can, people can sign up to gluten-free pancakes. Uh, they're on your list now, and then you can send them uh, in an autoresponder articles only on gluten-free pancakes. So now you can be quite specific and targeted to your client base in terms of what they indicated they're interested in. So if you're sending them stuff that they are interested in, then it's more likely they're going to come back and sort of deal with you because you've shown that uh, you, 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 know, you understand their needs and interests. Does that make sense? So there's probably more that you can do with it, but these are just some of the things that, that, uh, that we do, and we, we work with, it, with our clients with these as well and set these up for our clients. We've got a uh, building inspector, pest controller, uh, accounts, what, what do you got, bookkeeper. We've got them all on the, the system here. They never have to worry about the newsletter again. Uh, I've got a, a virtual assistant that runs it all. All we do is we say, for, for the bookkeeper, these are the topics that we want you know, people are going to be interested in. We do a bit of a survey of the clients. They're interested in, uh, for a bookkeeper, do you think they're interested in tax? No. They're interested in things that run a business, uh, how, to, how to be more profitable, uh, how to get more out of my staff, uh, how, how, to, how to deal with um, uh, customers that are a pain in the ass. So these are the sorts of things they're interested in. So those are the sorts of articles that uh, we look for for this bookkeeper and uh, those are what goes out to her customer base and she gets new business off that. So if you want to find out the step-by-step -step way to do it, there's the link. It's on our website, so go there, and, it, and all this is on the website. Um, or you go to our website and search newsletter, it'll come up and search. Um, or you can go to SlideShare, and it's there in SlideShare as well too, this exact presentation. But since I wrote this, um, the, you, you can actually automate it to do it quicker than 17 minutes a week. <laughs> you can actually use a service called Zapier, or Zapier, however you say it, and uh, it will grab articles from that you've curated in Feedly and automatically send it through to WordPress uh, as draft posts. So you don't even have to use the press this button. Um, and they're sitting there so then once a week you can, you can just go in, just check it all, just go through that setup in terms of putting the, um, the redirect link in, you might put a featured image in, so just go through that process and send it through. So that's probably saved another five minutes a week using something like Zapier or IFTTT which is another service like Zapier. So here's the resources we use. So we've got Press This, that's in the dashboard. Use it, get that from tribulant.com, or you can get it from the WordPress repository or go to tribulant.com. That's where you'll down that, download their newsletter plugin. Use a quick page post redirect plugin from the repository. Use Feedly, use Zapier. That's all, that's all it is. And that's how you find me. That's it.